Tomorrow we're gonna to be shooting a dog training video. You guys are gonna love it. A lot of you have asked for more puppy videos and we have been using a lot of puppies lately. That actually is not a conscious decision. It's just been working out that way because of that one right there. She falls in love with every puppy she sees. Not only am I excited about doing a puppy video, I have also been waiting to do another trick video. I'm really excited. Trick video. So we're gonna teach whisper and speak, hopefully. So that's like bark and then bark Quieter. Animal behavior is an elective that I've been waiting to be able to take. It's a 4,000 level class, so I had to do all these other like prerequisites to be able to take it. And I'm finally in it, and I've been really enjoying it. The title of this chapter is Learning, actually. And it's not really, they haven't been using dogs as examples very much, uh, so I was pleased to turn the page and come across a clicker. So this is a clicker, and the bottom line with clicker training is you click every time your dog does what you like, and then you follow it up with a reward. It's just basic classical conditioning, if you've ever learned about that in school. To me, it seems like new people especially, if they have that button in their hand to press and click like that, the moment their dog does what they like, and then, of course, follow it up with a food reward to let them know that you really like it, or toy, if you condition them to the toy. But that's the major benefit. But there's a lot of benefits of clicker training, and I think it's great. They also talk about how different currencies are valuable and that for many animals, a toy can be more exciting than food. Imagine that. It's so nice to see it printed, you know, in a college book. You know, I expected them to be a little more traditional when they came to, like, dog training and stuff. Yeah, um, I think I think if you would have been taking this class several years ago, there would be a stronger emphasis on, you know, things like, like, uh, punishment. The book is very clear that it's a more effective way to learn. As a matter of fact, the most advanced types of learning can only be taught with positive reinforcement training. And the book is very explicit about that. The book goes on to explain a shock mat uh, and compare it to positive reinforcement training. And I think it makes the point that yes, a shock mat can be effective. A shock mat, if you don't know, is where you can put it down, a dog can walk on it, and it will provide a mild, a mild electrical stimulation of some kind. Is that safe to say? Am I saying that right? Yes, but actually they, they make the point that the shock mat by itself is not effective at all because once you take the shock mat away, the dog is back on the couch. So if you put a shock mat on a couch to keep your dog off. And you teach them to avoid a piece of plastic, but you see that's, anyway, I get it. So that's a bit superficial is, right. is all that's saying. But it's very nice to see that some scientists have taken the time to do like a technical study where they see how hundreds of dogs respond to a shock mat versus just being given a nice place to sleep and shown that this is where you sleep. Could it be true that a science textbook is encouraging you to use less technical terms? Is it possible? Uh, I was not sure it was possible. Officially, it is out of favor to use like the technical positive punishment, negative reinforcement terms, because mm -hmm. it's too confusing. These distinctions do not drip off the tongue and can degenerate into semantic squabbles. As a result, many behaviorists are often now content to use reinforcement and punishment without adding qualifying terms such as positive or negative. Isn't it nice to hear, and I think a lot of you will agree out there who follow dog training, uh, whether you do it professionally as a hobby or you're brand new, uh, I think we can all kind of agree that a lot of the terminology that, that they use in dog training today is just unnecessarily overcomplicated, don't you think? Mm -hmm. It's almost more mm -hmm. of an art than a science, just because every dog is different and every person is different and there's no way you can convey that in a little formula. We know that if the outcome of a behavior is good, then a dog is likely to repeat that behavior. If the outcome is unpleasant, then the dog is less likely to repeat that behavior. And which one do you kind of favor? Which path do you choose for yourself? When you adopt a strategy of teaching your dog by reinforcing behaviors you like instead of punishing the behaviors you don't like, one of the instant benefits is there is no risk to having any side effects. You know, your dog dreading training or ears going back or tail going between the legs or whatever it might be. The most advanced types of teaching that there are must be taught through positive reinforcement training. Agility dogs who have to go really fast, they don't, there's no negative training used there. They, they have to be having fun and enjoying it if they're gonna like run really fast. I'm fortunate because my origins in dog training were in competitive dog frisbee, you know, uh, and when you're doing competitive frisbee, you have to teach your dog lots of fun, cool tricks, like leaping off your back into the air to catch a frisbee. It's called a vault when they do that. You can't 
make a dog do that. You have to make them want to. So I was really blessed to have figured that out very early on in my dog training career. We just got back from filming the video with Piper on how to do a speak and how to do a soft speak or a whisper. Uh, it went really, really awesome. You guys are gonna love the video. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel so you don't miss it. Um, you know, conclusively, science has shown that not only is positive reinforcement training more enjoyable for the person and the dog, but it's more effective. But still in light of this, We've seen a resurgence in e-collar training and prong collar training. I don't think anybody can really argue that training approaches rooted in zapping your dog or popping a leash do anything to foster a meaningful, loving relationship with our dogs. Now that doesn't mean that trainers who use these methods don't love their dogs, I'm sure they do, but the bonding process isn't happening while training, and it should. As a professional myself, I feel a deep obligation to inform and educate as many as will listen uh, that one should avoid these methods completely. We should not give our business to or support trainers who advocate for these outdated practices. Don't settle and don't listen to anyone trying to sell you a teaching approach based on force. Okay guys, thank you for listening and we will see you in the next video.